Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. In this episode, we are going to start putting some stuff together on the Panda Pandemonium, and we're gonna start with the transmission. I wanted to just point out, I'm taking out some of the bushings here, and these are brass, which is quite remarkable considering the bearings on the, pretty much every Tamiya product, especially in the lower end uh, spectrum of the 1980s, would have been plastic. So it's quite refreshing to see a high quality brass bushing used in a low end car. Obviously we are going to install some ball bearings. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some. I'm fairly certain that this car is going to take a standard five by 11 Tamiya ball bearing. And that is simply because, I, did I even make sure the brass one was out? Yeah, it's out of there. And that's simply because of the Cyclone. The Cyclone did have metric bearings. And you can also see that what I normally do is I'll put sealed bearings on the outside. Uh, excuse me, uh, a more thoroughly sealed bearing like rubber or Teflon. And on the inside, I'll use a metal shielded bearing. That's also because I like to put a little dab of oil in there. Usually in some of these cars, I have, I have some pretty old ball bearings that, you know, they work okay, but not particularly well. So this allows me to extend their life, especially in a car that's not driven that often. As you may recall or not, one of the axle shafts was bent and this is the the guy in question here this guy was quite quite crooked and i tried straightening it and there was just no success so the plan here was to just find a reproduction and fortunately a lot of these cars were made and a lot of parts were made as well so i was able to snag these on ebay for a little more than i anticipated these were, these were about nine dollars i think which again i mean who's going to complain on a car this old all right, and I did, however, forget how this car gets put together. I have to assume this one has some goo on the back of it. Maybe I just forgot to clean this one face. All right, that's better. So this is going to go, and I'm pretty sure that these axles yep, are the same. On this axle shaft here, we will put this bevel gear, and it's, it's keyed, so it'll just slot right in there, and this will go on the left side of the transmission housing. As you can see, it actually does sit a little bit deeper on this side like so. And that means on the right, this little guy, that little guy will go in. All right, so that's the two bevel gears and let's go ahead and replace the ball bearings and the counter gear. This is an interesting counter gear. I wonder what other cars it was used in. It appears to have a little bevel on the outside. This tells me that this was probably used in one of Panda's four wheel drive cars. Okay, so another, this feels a little tiny bit loose in there but it does fit. On the other side, we'll put the five by eight ball bearing. We have the axle, or the shaft that that rides on right there. And I believe this will go, ah, it goes in like this. Let's push this out and slip that in here like so. Cool, oops. And you just wanna make sure that this all fits nicely and it looks like everything is and then we'll put the diff gear in. This is very similar to a Tamiya Hornet, but um, none of these parts are interchangeable. And this looks like it should go in this way first. In fact, I am thinking I have to put a little dab of grease on this shaft here because this will in fact spin on it. Uh, you know, I'm actually not going to. This car is not gonna get very much use. And um, you know, I, I always worry about grease kind of getting old and sticky. Nylon, by the way, is a quite excellent material and will not wear so i'm not going to worry about that push that together like so and just kind of hold it on one side it feels quite good these are some of the smaller to me screws in fact they don't look like the 12 millimeter ones or the 8 millimeter ones these are 10 millimeter screws uh, cosmetically very similar to the ones found on many Tamiya kits but again the length is uh, uh it's an oddball Remember to always back thread because you do not want to cut new threads on these things since the last thing you want to do is add more stress to one of these old ABS plastic parts. They're, they're old and dry and brittle and we don't, want to, we don't want to break them. And that is, oh, looks like we have one more. Yeah, we have one more that goes through the little ball here. And we're back thread where there it goes, it just dropped in. All right, and when it stops, it's good enough. So there's the transmission. I think we can actually install it on the car now. As we recall, the chassis has this little ball here. Again, you probably would want to put a little bit of grease here. I'm just not going to. You know, this whole thing here is quite, 
quite heavily worn down and it's actually a little bit gummy. This has been cleaned a number of times and what we're seeing here is the plastic degrading because of the grease used. So I've decided to just clean it all off and just let it be. This is not gonna be a car that's gonna be bashed like it used to. Cap on it, like so. Cool, that is in. It's also important to note that these are all blind holes. Right here you can see the, uh, the four holes that hold it on. This means that you do not want to put a screw in that's too long, otherwise it will kind of try and stick out the other end, which means it will put a divot, or I should say a dimple, on the opposite side of the plastic, and more importantly, it could overstress and crack it. So please make sure that you put the shorter ones in these cars. So please make sure that when you are reassembling an older car that you put the correct screws where they came from. Okay, cool, that's all four of those. All seems pretty good. I think it would benefit from a little bit of grease. I'm gonna use some, some graphite spray, I think. Graphite spray is, you know, it's a dry powder and I'll, sp I'll spritz a little bit in there that'll, that'll free it up and not cause any kind of degradation of the plastic. What is more important here is the rear suspension. I picked up these HSP 116 scale shocks. I love these. I use them absolutely everywhere and they are going to take the place of these units here. It is not that I have a problem with these because I actually find them quite quite nice looking. It's just that I don't like friction shocks and I would like to make this car run a little bit nicer. So that is the plan here. Let's try and upgrade the suspension pad. Unfortunately, the problem with these shocks is these shock shafts are a little bit smaller than these shock shafts are. And what I want to do is pull out this little ball end here and place it in here so that they'll basically function the same way these guys did. This means I'm gonna have to redesign this little mount. And you can see here the length is a little bit off. It's probably about, well, it's probably yeah, it's more than a little bit off. The length here is about 10, uh, is it 10? Yeah, it's about 10 millimeters off. Um, they really didn't make longer ones. So the plan was to simply extend the length of these arms here, just a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna make them 10 millimeters longer, but I think I'll make them maybe around five or so millimeters longer. So that is the plan with these guys. As for this, we do have the front suspension that is on order and we have the shock tower which I've cleaned up. It's in excellent condition. I mean, this thing has shows no stress, no breaks, no cracks. So we are going to leave this guy in here. And I was gonna redesign this, but it turns out these are all over eBay. They're around five or $6. They're absolutely worthless because these cars really aren't worth that much. So I think we're gonna to have to make some mounts for these shocks. The front, you can see here, they're a little bit smaller. These are almost spot on to the originals. These will still require the proper size mount here to go through the three millimeter screw that held these on. So that is the plan with these as well. And I just noticed this. Oh dear, that's too bad. I kind of like these tires too. I kind of like how they're bald. Oh, well, we'll figure something out. Anyway, that is it for now. So let me go whip something up with these. And the next video that we'll see, I will most likely have the front suspension arms back from Shapeways and installing these shocks on the car in the front as well as in the rear. Well, thank you all so much for joining this installment of uh, Project. Did I even name this project? I think I did name it. I forgot it already. Project Pointless, was it? And the next one will do a little more work, but I did just want to go with this transmission because it was laying here and I wanted to put it together. Thank you all for watching. Remember, please check out my Instagram and Facebook page at Pro Engineering on both. And as usual, check out Blue Pinto. They are the ones that allow me to use their songs in my videos. And a link to their Facebook page is in the end credits. Thank you all and we'll see you next time.